Spy, another Sportster? Are you it, serious? It's dude? not a Sportster, man. This is this is the Bolt. It's a Yamaha Bolt. It's not a Sportster, I promise. Dude, if you just if you want another Sportster, we can probably make it happen. No, just no, let me come know. Come on, dude. We're we're looking for the perfect replacement for the Sportster. There oh, is one out there. God, I swear dude, to God, we're gonna find no, it. No, I can't. Today. I'm I'm hitting unsubscribe. I can't do this anymore. No, dude, wait. Come back. We gotta make no, a video. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> All right, everyone, today we are finding out which of these two metric cruiser options are actually going to dethrone the Sportster. And that's actually not going to be too hard because the Sportster is on its way out, right, Spike? Yeah, no, the uh, Sportster is going to die. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's <laughs> it's on its way out. They've I feel like gone... you're just kicking it to death slowly in the corner. I'm, I'm the guy who's like, no, keep it around. But unfortunately, they can't sell it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's too old school, and they only have three models left, and those are going to be phased out, mark my words. Mm -hmm. So we have these two alternative Sportsters, and the Bolt is probably the most recognizable of those alternatives. Yeah. And we actually got this one off of Twisted Road. So if you want to get yourself a free day of riding, click the link down below. Check out how you can get that going. Uh, this motorcycle here has a 942cc V-twin in it, which is nice what you'd want to see out of a Sportster competitor, especially mm -hmm. one that is air-cooled with a five-speed transmission. It's making a very Sportster appropriate 65 horsepower and 58 foot-pounds of torque, and it weighs in at 542 pounds. This one is pretty much just a Sportster. Yeah. Which is not what we can say about this one. No, we can't. So this, of course, is our giveaway Honda Rebel 1100. If you want a chance to win this motorcycle for free, hit the link down below on yamanoob.co or go to yamanoob.com. But this bike is radically different from cruisers on the market today. So this features an Africa twin-derived 1084cc parallel twin engine. It makes 84 horsepower and about 72 foot-pounds of torque. See, I'm already hitting the Honda where it hurts already. Uh, features a six-speed gearbox, cruise control, some more advanced electronics on this thing and it's just overall a lighter motorcycle as well at 487 pounds so you're gonna be riding a motorcycle that is going to be feeling a lot lighter through the twisties easier to ride easier to maneuver and it has that Honda fit and finish you can tell by the shape of the gas tank and some of the other features on this motorcycle that's designed to be a much more sporty kind of bike Maybe that's why it's gunning for the Sportster as it were and today we're gonna take both of these bikes out and see which one is a worthy metric entry-level cruiser competitor to the tried and true Sportster what do you say Play. Yeah, but before we do, I want to do something a little bit different today. Mm. I want to see, like, give me your just gut impression. Which do you think is going to be the better sports alternative? Normally, we reserve our judgment for the end, but I want to see what you mm. think just right out of the gate. I do think that this bike, if you fit it like a full exhaust to it and everything else, would be like the authentic cruiser experience. Mm -hmm. But I know the Honda's going to be a better bike. <laughs> <laughs> What's your hypothesis? So I did ride this bike in, so I'm going to reserve my judgment. I don't okay. want to color your opinions okay. or anything like that. But I do I, I do already have a inkling of which is the better Sportster, for sure. All right, well, let's find out. Alrighty, everyone, starting this one out in motion cruising here, truly, with these cruiser motorcycles. Got the Yamaha Bolt here and the Honda Rebel. And I am starting off on the Bolt, and this is my very first time jumping aboard on it. And I just rode in from the Rebel, and I was telling Spite, it appears that I have gone backwards in time. I am on <laughs> something that is very reminiscent to the Sportster, honestly. What do you think, Spite? So, my initial impression is that it's trying a little too hard to be a sportster and it misses the mark it, it doesn't understand what made the sportster so unique to people i think i think because it's not a push rod engine yeah it's air cooled yeah it has five gears yes it's a belt drive but it's missing the point of the gear driven or the uh yeah the gear driven cams the push rod setup it, it doesn't have that like classic rattly tambourine situation that the uh, sporty did. It's it's just a little too clean for me. Yeah, I mean it. It definitely feels like the great value version of a Sportster. Um, but it's very similar, you know. 
Um, I feel like, you know, belt drive, five-speed transmission, air-cooled V-twin, so much of what makes the Sportster a Sportster is here. I mean, the specs on paper almost are identical. The grips are identical. The width of the grip, like, so much here is so similar to the Sportster that it's difficult to ride this bike and not think about that motorcycle, which is what I think, you know, Yamaha wanted to do when they built this thing. But the Rebel's totally different. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's so different. It's weird that Honda even benchmarked against the Sportster because the Rebel feels like a completely different motorcycle to ride. Yeah, I mean, it, it honestly feels at home on this little twisty road. I'm having a lot of fun just chucking it through the corners. I'm not really having to worry about searching for the pegs. Yeah, I just um, touched my pegs right when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect timing. This thing, it really does feel like Honda made a naked bike and then they kind of turned it into a cruiser a little bit. Yeah. It's got this it's got this setup that feels so much more playful than any other cruiser I've ever ridden. Yeah, the the Rebel's super confidence inspiring. You can definitely feel the weight difference over stuff like the Bolt and the Scout and all those kinds of cruisers. Um, and I I just really like the way the Honda feels on the side of the tires. It's, it's not like any other cruiser I've really spend any time with you know it's super different yeah and honestly the thing about these two bikes the more that i rode the bolt around the more i think it's refreshing to not be aping the sportster so hard on the rebel you know yeah let's do something different you know like why do we have to keep benchmarking against the sportster like just because it sold well doesn't mean that we can't make something better right yeah i mean this feels like this feels like a Sportster that was built in 2021. You know, it's modern, it's liquid cooled, it's got power the way that you would want it to, and it handles really well. I mean, that was actually back in the day, one of the things that people loved about the Sporty uh, when it first came out. And part of the reason why it got called the Sportster was because it handled well. Which is which is mind blowing to think that back in the day they got on a sports you're like, damn, this thing handles great. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's kind of where the name comes from. So I ride something like this, and God, I just feel that you know, the, it's just got this huge cradle frame. It feels like a bit of a barge, um, and the Rebel just doesn't feel that way at all. I also think there's some curious design choices on the bolt it's got a really the engine setup is strange where one cylinder is kind of offset a little bit and it's sticking out and the air box is in the wrong spot it hits your knee really easily or maybe it's just because i'm a little bit bigger yeah it does uh, hit my knee a little bit but i feel like i'm kind of used to that from riding the sports and stuff yeah I, I think that this being so modern it fixes a lot of the problems while still giving you that style and that feeling because honestly i sit on the rebel and i feel like i'm sitting on a sportster style motorcycle yeah now one thing i wanted to do because we're actually coming up to a highway here uh we can show the acceleration difference between these two bikes because the rebel really boogies even though you're a little heavier than me um the rebel is so much lighter that i don't think it's going to make much of a difference and i still think you're going to absolutely obliterate this bolt <laughs> yeah, I, I really do think this thing's just going to walk away. Yeah. Although we are going downhill. Maybe your extra 70 pounds <laughs> my, will my help My momentum out. will just carry me forward. <laughs> you ready? Yep. All right, whenever. Let's go. <laughs> Whee! I even gave you a little bit of a head start. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's no match for it at all. Like, I, I looked I over you, and I, I was like... pulled like a bus length and like by, by 80. <laughs> I looked yeah. over and I was like, oh wait, we're going because you, you had the throttle wide open. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's no there's no <laughs> RPM counter on the bolt and then I just, I hit the red line. I was like, oh, is that it? I was like, I guess I got to grab another gear and then it was already over in the other one. <laughs> it really, really runs out of breath. It's definitely not a rever, whereas that thing really, really punches hard. Yeah, I wish this had another 1,000 RPM to play with, though. It, and here's the big elephant in the room. What's the price on the Bolt? The Bolt is $7,999, brand spanking new. And then the so, Rebel 1100 is $92.99 for the standard yep. manual without the DCT. So for $1,200 more, 
I think you get a whole lot more motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, you like, really, really way do. Way more bike, cruise control, engine modes, way more power, way more modern, lighter weight, like so much better. But I guess it's almost unfair because the Bolt's an older model bike that they're still making new and it's based on an old ass bike like the Sportster. So <laughs> you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. But again, I think that this is doing things that if Harley wasn't so wrapped up in the past, they would want the Sportster to be doing. Like they're trying to make that new custom 1250 and it, it looks kind of just like a muscly rebel, you know? It's this big pokey V-twin in a lightish cruiser frame that's supposed to handle well. That yeah, I really like wish they would take some of their Pan America design acumen and know-how and apply it to the Sportster platform because that's a bike that doesn't make any concessions and comes in at a decent price, you know? Like, if Harley could do that across, like, cruisers and maybe a Sport Naked, there you go. You just saved the brand. Yep. And, you know... Oh, wow. Sure. Fifth gear is like a crazy overdrive gear on this bike, huh? Yeah, there's literally nothing to fifth gear. It has no teeth whatsoever. That's insane. It does make it vibrate less than a Sportster, so I guess in that sense it's pretty convenient, but... Yeah. I don't know. It just... I really do think that that bike is being held back by how much it bows its knee to the Sportster. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, what do you say we flip around, we swap bikes, and keep comparing and contrasting? Sounds good. And then you can put up with this hunk of shit. <laughs> uh, did you feel how, like, spongy and squishy oh, the front it's, fork was on it's, this? It's a joke, man. Like, that is a... Yeah, n no. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Oh, here we go. This is a lot better. <laughs> it's just a... The Rebel's a bike that just doesn't compromise. It's like, no, you can have a cruiser that does all this cool stuff. I feel like you could have gone, and then you, you look down at the engine, you're like, no, nah, it's not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't accelerate that quickly. Yeah, to your point, like the lever feel, the throttle feel, the engine feel, I'm like, oh yeah, naked bike, for sure. You know, like, mm -hmm. I just happen to be in a cruiser position, but definitely naked bike. I was actually just thinking that the other day of how similar... The Rebel is in its ethos to the Diablo. Ugh, go bike! <laughs> go! Jesus Christ, my excel, there's nothing. I mean, that's ridiculous in terms of acceleration. <laughs> you were, you like, you actually took off and then I looked at traffic and then I started going and I just, it looks like you weren't even moving as I was coming towards you. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how just, th there's not, no one's home. If you don't ride them back to back, you're like, okay, they copied the Sportster, for sure. They, they, they just made a Japanese Sportster. All sushi, no beef. Um, but the thing is, is it's, it's really clean about how it goes about its business. It's slow, but it, it doesn't have the character that the Sportster did. Like, the Sportster, you get it up to highway speed, and it sounds like you've got nuts and bolts rattling around in the top end of the engine. And I, I like that about the Sportster. It was stupid, but it, the Sportster's a stupid bike, and I can get with that. This just feels kind of gimped up. Well, let me ask you this. From an aesthetic perspective, because I know that's very important to cruiser owners and riders, um, do you feel that the Bolt looks better than the Rebel? Because I think the Rebel's looks are kind of polarizing to some people. I, I've seen a lot of comments people be like, that is the ugliest bike I've ever seen, which I, I feel like is ridiculous because we live in a world that the Gladius exists, so I can't, that objectively cannot be true. Uh, I think that this is a much more classic design on the on the Bolt. It's, yes, it's I think It's very so too. classic. It's, it's easily recognizable. Um, I don't think anybody could say that this motorcycle is ugly. No way, yeah. Uh, I think that the Rebel can be a bit of an acquired taste. Um, it's like the retro modern Sportster, you know? Mm -hmm. To me it feels like it's a... They're, they're trying to create a blank slate from which you could go about modifying a motorcycle, you know, and, and upgrading it and do all that sort of thing. So I think in terms of looks, I gotta give it to the Bolt because it is... I mean, the, the green tank looks nice with the offset stripe here and the... Yeah, um, it's a handsome, it's a handsome ride. 
every <laughs> on time, the every time right the horn, there. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they're upside down. <laughs> I will say, this is a better cruiser though. This is a better cruiser because it's just, it's chilled out. The Rebel's really aggressive, really snappy. There have been a couple of times I just want to like kick my knees out and cruise like this and I accidentally whiskey throttle the Rebel a little bit and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. So maybe bikes like that are more cruisery because you can just cruise with them. And, you know, I, I'm just so used to more high performance motorcycles and things that are newer and more modern that bikes like that just don't do much for me because I, I want to feel like I'm on a machine that's capable. You know, it's difficult for me to ride a thing that I'm like, oh, does it really have my back? You know, I can't really tell. Um, so yeah, may, maybe that's better for it. But yeah, between these two bikes, and if it were my money, I'd definitely pick the Rebel. Definitely. Oh, for sure. For sure. But I think that this thing, the again, it, it doesn't understand. Sure, yeah, you can cruise on it really easily, but it doesn't understand why the Sportster was so cool. It it's, it's literally just, you went through the steps, you made a bike that looks and handles and rides like a sporty, but it doesn't have the soul. I mm. like the fact that the Sportster shook my eyeballs inside my head when I was sitting at a stoplight. You yeah. know? This thing doesn't do that. It feels really muted, very pedestrian. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, I'm not a big Sportster fan, but the Sportster, after we did the 1275 swap, man, that was one of the craziest and most unique riding experiences I, I have ever had on any motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, that thing was, was wild. Awesome. Yeah, it's funny though because you know, we talked about the Sportster a lot on today's video, but you know it's an icon for a reason. And at the same time, it's funny because the Sportster is objectively a worse motorcycle than both of these bikes. You know, yeah, uh, the Bolt's going to be more reliable. It's uh, a little bit nicer, makes a little bit more power. It's super cheap. Um, the the Rebel obviously is just a much better motorcycle than the Sportster could ever dream to be. Um, so it's funny that we keep talking about the Sportster and. Do you think it's just because it's sold so many units and it has become that iconic bike that we have to kind of, you know, pay reverence to it almost? I think so. I think it's because it's that, like, classic icon of cruiser motorcycling. I mean, yeah, you think of, like, big road glides and stuff. Uh, but the silhouette, when you think of a cruiser, is a Dyna, a Sportster. Those smaller Harleys which it's kind of funny thinking of a yeah. um, Dyna as a small <laughs> Harley, but the smaller framed cruisers are the things that people most think of when they think of cruiser. Well, Spite, with all that being said, what do you say we wrap up today's video and uh, finalize our thoughts on these two bikes? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right, everyone, wrapping up the day here with the Yamaha Bolt and the Honda Rebel 1100. We've had a lot of fun putting these bikes through their paces, and Spider's our resident cruiser boy in chief. What do you think about these two bikes? Well, first of all, I feel it's fitting that there's some butt rock blaring in the background. I yeah. think that's great. Of course. Uh, but I mean, honestly, I think that the Rebel is the bike to get among these two. Totally. Um, it feels like a spiritual successor to the Sportster. Now, if you want to bear with me here, you have to think back to what the original Sportster was about. It was a sporty motorcycle. It was a little bit lighter. It was performance oriented. It could handle well. That's this motorcycle. This thing is, it's, it's literally just a Sportster in the modern day and age, which, I mean, we've said it a thousand times, modern motorcycling has left the Sportster behind. Yes. And it has left this motorcycle behind too. Mm -hmm. So I think that this motorcycle here, the Rebel, really does carry the torch for what the original Sportster's ethos was all about. Yeah, I feel like this bike is, you know, it harkens back so much to the Sportster and the classic thing. It really feels like a classic rock tribute band to me, mm -hmm. whereas the Rebel feels more like a modern rock band that's got you know modern production techniques, something a little bit more interesting going on. And yeah, it just has nothing really to say for the Rebel. The performance isn't there. The lever feels and the controls are all kind of wonky. It's heavy. You know, it's designed to be a bike that, like you said, just cruises nice and smooth in a straight line, which I think you think that this bike is kind of better for that, right? Yeah, I mean, as a cruiser motorcycle, I think if, if you don't care at all about 
performance and you just want that air-cooled V-twin, this bike will give you that. Mm -hmm. I think you're sacrificing a lot for it. The suspension is woeful on this thing. The, the handlebar has a death wobble in it. Yeah, the, the frame geometry is terrible. It's heavy. It's very strange on the side of the tire. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it, it's just there's too much sacrifice in this motorcycle. And this thing's not that much dearer at only 1300 bucks more, and you get a lot more bang for your buck. Totally. And I think you could really cruise down the road on this thing once you get past kind of how twitchy the throttle can be from time to time. Yeah. I think if you're the kind of guy or girl that really cares about that V-twin authentic experience, do give yourself a little bit of leeway and try something like the Honda Rebel. You might not know that you might fall in love with it until you try it and you might think that you wanted something like this, but then you try a bike like that and you're like, oh, actually this just feels so much better and more confidence inspiring. As for me personally, riding that thing at slow speeds, thinking my mind is like an entry or a second bike owner, uh, it's so confidence inspiring to whip this thing around and ride it. It feels so playful and nimble and fun, whereas this is a little bit more barge-like, you know? Yeah, it really does feel weird for people to be saying if you're interested in the rebel check out the bolt it's a great competitor oh, no this thing no just, competition no, this has nothing for it no it's, it's just it's a motorcycle this is like wow okay this is really good yeah i feel like if you're cross shopping these two hopefully you've made it to the end of this video you shouldn't cross shop these two <laughs> bikes i don't think they have much in common at all especially having ridden both back to back mm -hmm. um yeah, I think the Indian Scout is closer to the Honda Rebel, but also not really in a different way, you know? Yeah. Like, there doesn't really feel like there's a lot of competition for the Rebel right now. No, it's one of a kind, and I think that's cool. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just go out and get something that feels different. I guess maybe now the Rebel is rebellious. It doesn't have... Maybe now, It doesn't yeah. have its V-twin, but it has the V-twin sound. It's kind of sporting. Yeah. It's a it's really a fun bike. Screw your V-twin. I got an Africa <laughs> twin engine, right? Something like that. Well, anyways, guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video and this look between the Honda Rebel and the Bolt. If you want to get a free day of riding, check out the link below for Twisted Road to see how you can rent a motorcycle just like this one. Remember, we're giving away the Honda Rebel as well. Hit the link down below. It's amenu.co or amenumerch.com. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. This thing has such a bad wobble in the handlebars because of this fucking windscreen. No, that windscreen is like the worst thing ever. Jesus Christ, look at that in the in the video. Whoa, look at the... whoa, <laughs> you get a crazy shimmy out of that thing. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That does not look safe. Between this and my desert sled, you might think I'm just some horrible biscotti boy, but really, if you click this video right over here, I will prove to you that I love more motorcycles than just Ducati biscottis. Click it and find out.